we've just pulled into the field with a Swing Max and I'm gonna go through and show you how to engage auto mode in field mode and set the offset and bail some hay. We're in road mode right now. Um, so an easy way to switch from road mode to field mode is we just select manual mode and then select change mode and a, pop, a drop down will show up here and we're gonna go to field. When we do that, we're gonna get this pop up and that is offsetting our windrow distance from center of windrow to center of windrow. I know that we have a 30 foot rake in this field. You can see here the top number is degrees. That's the degree that the swing max is uh, thinking in. The bottom number is feet. So I'm gonna get close to 30 feet. It doesn't really matter because the IDAR is gonna pick that windrow up when we're close. 30.1, that's good. I'm gonna hit set. Now our offset is set to 30 feet, but you'll see here on the encoder knob, the center selection is lit up to red. When we get driving in the field here, we're gonna um, select the right button and that's gonna move the swing max to the 30 foot offset. And then we're gonna bail some hay. So we can go ahead and turn the uh, PTOs on for the baler. So I'm gonna do that. So there the PTOs are on. I give myself a bit of RPMs. Uh, the other thing we can do is the remotes for the rear balers are in these uh, selections. So I press options and that gave me the options for the remotes. So I'm just gonna make sure both of those are down. That's for my front baler and this one's for my rear baler. They're both down. I'm just gonna press that options again and, and make that menu disappear. Okay, so I've set my PTOs on. I'm gonna set my tractor RPMs up to um, PTO RPM, which on this is a thousand. So I'm gonna go into auto mode by pressing this grid button. Um, it's gonna be a pop-up saying you want auto control. I'm gonna hit enter. Um, right now I'm, I wanna get to my window, so I'm gonna leave my offset set to center. Uh, so I've got it in line to follow my tractor on the headlands. Uh, as I approach these other two windrows, I'm gonna set the offset to the right. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And that's gonna swing the, the baler out to 30 feet. And I'm gonna turn into my windrow, nice and wide. And that second baler is gonna pick up this windrow here as it approaches it. So my front baler is already on the windrow. My rear baler I've set to 30 feet. When I get close to the roll with the rear baler, you're gonna see a pop-up come up that a object has been detected and I'm gonna select yes to get LiDAR on as soon as possible so that that baler picks up that windrow without missing any hay. Now the other point I wanna make is I have targeted 33 degrees, which was 30 feet, but I'm actually working at 36.3 feet. So when we're in the windrow and we're bailing hay, if we press the center button, that corrects our offset. So that overrides what we programmed into this screen. And now it's set the offset at 34 degrees, which is uh, 30.9 feet. It's always a good practice to get bailing um, maybe 100 feet down the windrow and uh, and press the center button. At any time, if you press the center button, it'll it'll save the current offset of that rear axle. If at any time the LiDAR was to lose a windrow, it's gonna ignore what it's seeing and it's gonna go back to where your offset is. So by us setting this center distance or pressing the center button and setting our offset to what is current, if the LiDAR camera loses that windrow, that axle is going to maintain that offset distance. If our offset distance target was 15 degrees and we were actually working at 32 degrees, if the wind roll ended, the swing max arm would want to steer in to that 15 degrees and we get a pretty drastic change in steering. I made pretty good wind rolls here today, so I'm not, I don't foresee LiDAR dropping off here. And they're actually rake evenly and straight um, so there's really limited steering going on from that rear rear baler most of the time it isn't working on this because this is our prototype unit but you would see a live image in this area of the screen through a camera on the back axle so i'd be able to see the windrow that the lidar is seeing but nonetheless it's easy to look out and see where my baler is on the windrow um, that rear baler now is in a pretty pretty uh, dicey section of windrow. There's barely anything there. 
and you can tell that the baler is jumping on and off of LiDAR. So it, it's seeing the windrow again. I'm gonna select this enter button and that's gonna engage LiDAR. It kind of came in towards the tracker. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and select this center button again, but nonetheless, it didn't miss any hay and it's steering down the windrow the way it should. If for whatever reason, we didn't like where the swing match was driving across the row, if it was driving off center, we can actually change the offset of that axle by up to four degrees. So I'm gonna take and set that axle to the left, four degrees, and you can see that that tire is now driving on that windrow. I don't wanna do that, so I'm gonna take it back to the center. Um, and same with if I go to the right. Uh, two degrees um, is where it's offset now, and I can go up to four, but I don't wanna do that. Where that would uh, come into play, is if we had a tire track that flattened part of the windrow and it actually thought it was on the center of the windrow but it was the windrow was offset, you can just fine tune that by turning this dial a degree or two depending how you want that axle to turn. You'll see a pump load here. That's the load of the pump on the three-point hitch mount. Um, the pump is driving the motor on the rear axle and that is the strain that's on the pump. 20% I think is about normal. We never want to get to 100%. We're bailing today, we're bailing at about four miles per hour. The windrows aren't crazy heavy, and we're making nice uniform 32 inch bales for the Baron. Uh, the bales are weighing around 60 pounds. So I like working clockwise in a field. So I'm coming up two windrows and I'm gonna turn to my right. I purposely skipped four windrows and I'm bailing windrow five and six. So what I'm gonna do is skip the four I skipped before and go beyond the two windrows that I bailed earlier and come up the far side of those windrows and work in that clockwise pattern. So I've got lots of room for turning in the headlands. Uh, these green lines at the bottom here is the profile of the windrow that the LiDAR is seeing. And that is good. You can see it's centered up in the, in the status bar here, let's call it, and it's a nice uniform round shape. So these are good windrows. The other thing you'll notice is this green uh, LED indicator bar on top of the screen. That means that we're in LiDAR mode, in auto mode, in field mode. Uh, we're just getting close to the end of the windrow now. Um, we're gonna leave the rear axle on LiDAR mode until it gets off of the windrow and then we're gonna switch to uh, pulling the swing max in behind the baler in the center button. But I'm gonna wait to push that center button until that swing max, the rear axle, isn't seeing that windrow anymore. I'm now getting to the end of the windrow. So what I'm gonna do, I, get, I like giving myself lots of room at the headlands. The baler that I have on the tractor is gonna end the windrow first, uh, but that's fine. So that, as I steer, that rear baler is gonna keep following that windrow back there. And you can see here that that distance is gonna change. So now it's actually not seeing the, it's not seeing that windrow anymore. So I'm just gonna wait until it's off the, off the roll. And then I'm gonna hit this center button because I want that to steer in line with the tracker. Since I'm on the, on the headlands, I'm just gonna go up a gear. And I'm gonna get around, around bail. So I've skipped four windrows plus the two I previously bailed. And I'm just gonna drive past everything and turn right into the next two windrows here. Um, you can see it's uh, centered up behind the baler, uh, which I'm approaching my windrow, so I'm actually gonna hit that right offset, which will take that to 30 feet, and I'm gonna dive into the windrows here. Um, I'm gonna gear down, just because I'm getting to the hay. And actually, I'm gonna just steer that back axle um, closer so it's gonna have an easier time seeing that in LiDAR. It's, so the pop-up for LiDAR came up and I hit the enter button. So now it's in LiDAR mode back there. Uh, now we're in the windrow a couple of feet. I'm gonna hit the center button again to get that dialed in. Just gonna kick it off a wee bit of a notch. Uh, we're in decent windrows, so I don't want to plug my baler, so I'm just going to take it good and easy, but uh, 
here with Bailey. 